Welcome everyone to our final event in the GSU Libraries 2021 Open Access Week celebration. Thank you for joining us. Joining us. I am recording this session and I'll be happy to share the link with everyone. All week we've been exploring various ways to provide free or openly licensed course content for our students. And today the GSU Library and the Andrew Young School of Policy Studies are hosting this panel representing three very different departments here at Georgia State. We'll be hearing from the departments of chemistry, computer information systems, and social work. We're hoping that the opportunity to hear from a variety of departments and projects will give you an overall sense of various approaches for this type of project. All three of the teams we're hearing from have transformed their courses to use free or affordable course content for their students. We'll hear from each team individually, and then we'll take questions at the end after all three teams have presented. Our first team um, presentation is from the chemistry department. We're excited to hear from you, and I will turn this over to you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Antara Dutta, and I, along with my team members, uh, today we are presenting about uh, our digital textbook, which is based on principles of chemistry one or chem 1211. So with me, I have Dr. Atea and Dr. Bausman, who are the collaborators. And I also have two staff members, uh, one librarian uh, assistant, uh, Marianne Cullen, and I have also learning designer specialist, Jeremy Schwartz. Thank you, everyone. And uh, having said that, I'm going to share my slides. So we also have two contributing members uh, who worked with us, but not directly connected to this project. And uh, we have Jose Gonzalez Roman, and we have also Shalini J, who contributed to our project. So the reason behind creating this textbook, um, this principles of chemistry one or came to eleven is the most. Uh, withdrawal uh, rate students we see in this course, like about 65% students normally pass every semester. Historically, we see very high withdrawal rate. And DFW, since DFW rate is very high, we have been thinking about how to create a better learning environment for the students and how to improve the success and retention rate. Sometimes we see that when students come, um, they just get overwhelmed by seeing the textbook volume. So that was also one concern for all the instructors, like how to make students feel better or interested to learn more about the subject. So for all these reasons, and also the online platform, these days students live in the digital world. So they want everything electronic. So considering that factor also, we started thinking about creating some electronic content for the students who are taking this course. So we wanted to develop actually one free, totally free, um, and it should be accessible and it should be equitable. Like on the very first day when students come to class, we see that the first thing they say, we don't have textbook. So we just wanted to remove that factor, like they should always have the materials with them. And we also tried to incorporate some multimedia component like interactive factors so that they get engaged. And finally, we wanted to see how they perform on this new content using this new delivery or new content materials. So our funding came from ALG, which is Affordable Learning Georgia and uh, Perimeter Grant Office. I, I'm thankful to Perimeter Grant Office for informing all those information about the grant and preparing us for the submission of the grant proposal. 
And we received this grant in fall 2020, actually, and that was uh, around, around 18 and number 557. And it should be ended by this uh, fall 21. But due to pandemic, we have very low enrollment, and that's why we extended our grant until spring 2022. So it should be done by May 2022. So basically, when we are in this grant, we have to attend one kickoff meeting and we have to submit an end of semester report, like how our project is progressing. And then we have to submit one final grant report with complete analysis of the performance and transformation. And we have also um, our study is also approved by IRB. So we have got approval from IRB, GSU IRB as well. Now we are using OER materials. So uh, I hope everybody already knows about the OER. So this is our ebook is completely free and it is openly licensed and all the attributions are connected via link. And this is all electronic. We have used different materials and our members of the team have immensely helped us to get all those materials and correctly put them together. And we have a librarian in our group, so she helped us to get all the CC text images done. And she mentioned about the copyright uh, restriction. And also we have a handout. If you want to look at this, you can see all the links and all the um, information along with this. Our content uh, layout is uh, different from the traditional uh, book because we are focusing on specific learning objectives and student success, especially at Perimeter College. So we are using different types of simulations uh, so that students uh, can try them and they can get the idea about how things are actually happening. Like they, I, um, as a as an instructor or um, like teaching this course for many years, I want to make students feel like they can see the chemistry, not like reading chemistry. So that is the reason um, we in included some simulations, also some videos. And for every uh, topic, we have interactive practice quizzes so that they can assess themselves. It is like self-assessment. And also we have included some numerical problems and that are worked out. So if um, they want to try out some problems by themselves, they can see the solutions and they can figure out. So these are the characteristics of main features of our ebook. Next is the media. So we designed, uh, we have created actually many different types of materials. Uh, those are interactive, some quizzes, some videos. Um, right in, in front of you, you may see one video that is based on like play posit. So this is like one GSU licensed program that is interactive. So through this, students are using different um, they are using different quizzes, they are taking that, and those are already graded on iCollege. So we can see how they are learning, how how is the quiz and how much they are particip participating in all those things. So those are actually very effective, I see. And also we created one video on balancing equations. And, and that was also very popular among students because we, we brought some um, practical life examples in that. So our book is published on many different platforms. We have ALG in, uh, opens. That is the, the in this site. If you go, you will see that our previous ebook is published on this site. We have also a version of the book and uh, we have a full template of the book ebook on iCollege. So we have different ways students can access this ebook. And of course, if you if somebody wants the offline copy, we can have the hard copy, like PDF copy of the material. Now I would like to take you to our book just to show you how it looks like. So this is the link for our 
ebook. Maybe. See if we just click on 1211. You will see that there are different modules we have created. These are based on curriculum committee provided um, course material. And in each module, you will see there are different topics and the quizzes are given here, practice quizzes. And along with that, there are some also interactive quizzes, just like play pause it I mentioned. So, for example, this one is interactive walkthrough on significant figures. So students can actually learn. This is like a tutorial video. They go through it, they submit their answers, and it provides feedback immediately. And finally, in this semester, we are assessing our um, performance, student performance using the C-book. So we have different types of assessment criteria. We are taking the quiz grades, we are taking the unit exam grades, and also we have nationally standardized final exam, which is American Chemical Society final exam that we give as final, and overall course grade. So we are going to look all these small steps, small assessment uh, assignments, and as well as the overall course grade to see how students are performing using this ebook. And we also conduct three survey questionnaires, like uh, we give first one ab about their background, students' background in the beginning of the semester. Then around midpoint, we have one survey about the class activities or how it is going, what is the expectation level like that. And at the end, we give another survey that is based on your overall experience of the students, like how they would like to see this book in the future. So, so far we have given one exam and we see very positive response. We have only 60 students participating, but uh, they are all doing very well. We have very high quiz average and exam average is also good. So we are looking forward to good outcome of this ebook. And uh, for the survey also, we found very good positive responses. Most students are determined to succeed. And here is like one student said that I expect to have uh, great grades in this course and also have better understanding of chemistry. That means they have no mm, problem with using this book or studying using this book. And at the end, I would like to thank all the my physical chemistry and physical science department at Perimeter College. Dr. Fisiha and Dr. Johannes and Dr. Michaelson, without their support, it would not be possible. And also the grant office at Perimeter College and ALG um, initiatives. Here is our group. As you see, there are many instructors, though they are using the OER ebook and they are successful in their classes. And they are also hoping to get the next one. Thank you, and uh, it, any question I would like to take. And if anybody else from my group wants to speak about their contribution, please go ahead. Okay, thank you very much. We'll come back to some questions at the end, just to be sure. Um, uh, any, any more comments from this group? Thank you. Sure. Alrighty, for the next group we have, the next team is from the computer information systems department. So, um, I'm excited to hear from you. So take it away. Yeah, let me share a computer screen. Oh, sure. yes. Um, so you... Oh, I have to stop. Okay. Yes, you uh. have to stop. <laughs>
Can you, can you see the screen? Yes. Uh, not the slides, sorry. Yeah. But not the slides. <laughs> sorry. Uh, do you see it? Yes, that's it. Wonderful. Well, thanks, Denise, to invite us to this panel. So share our experience design this exper this affordable course. I'm Shi Gang Hong, um, a clinical associate professor and a social chair in the computer information systems department. And with me, the professional, <laughs> Ms. Rubana Sina from the CETO. Let me see if I can. Oh, good, it's an advancing. Good, wonderful. So the subject of this course is a cloud computing and a cloud application development. Uh, nowadays, almost everyone, every business, every organization rely on cloud computing. It's like a utilities shown by this uh, industrial uh, research. So that's created a lot of job opportunities for our students. Uh, as you can see, if you trust what uh, uh, all this research tells, there's a lot of open jobs of, um, need to be filled up. So that's, uh, and the, course, the students in this course are all seniors. And they're either graduate in a current semester or in a following semester. So the main objectives of this course is to teach the fundamentals of the technology and help students to build a very remarkable skills and be ready for the job market. So that's our main objectives. And to create this course be affordable, uh, there's a tons, thousands of hours online learning contents already available for GSU students. Um, for example, uh, our GSU library, the Lincoln e-learning has over 400, almost like a 500 available courses on cloud computing subject. And in addition, uh, GSU is a official, is a called an official institute of Amazon AWS Academy. Uh, what this does is uh, allow GSU instructors and students free access to all those courses in the AWS Academy. And it also offer our students 50% discount on a virtuous and take all certification exams. So that's a, and same for other major platforms that provide us many tons, tons of online training materials for anyone uh, want to want to learn or to take a knowledge. So that's a, uh, to look at those, we don't have much options, right? If you look at the textbooks, and no textbook can cover all the subject, and which means we come down to have several textbooks, be able to cover enough to, to make to prepare our students. And secondly, for any textbook, it will be quickly outdated, and it could take a lot of you and advance so rapidly. So. Give the, the, the option, the opportunities for us is to leverage all those online available course, all those online learning materials and create this course be affordable, which means no textbook, and which means no cost, no learning material costs for our students. And we also received the fortune, very lucky, received the continual improvement grant from the Georgia Affordable Learning. So um, I'm going to turn over to um, Rubena to talk about the course design. 
Yeah, I'm happy to. So Bannon, um, you want to take over? Yes, can you hear me? Oh, sorry, can I hear you? You must be muted. Oh. I can hear you. Okay. Oh, okay. yes. All right, so uh, like Dr. Hong said, um, there are many, many resources available out there for um, this topic, and it would be actually doing students a disservice if we were to select a textbook, however um, cheap that is, because the technology that our students are working with is changing very rapidly. And also, um, I give actually Dr. Hong a lot of credit for conceptualizing this course under true college to career principles. Um, he is very passionate about giving students marketable skills that um, will uh, land them careers in the field, hopefully after graduation. And this is especially important since they are mostly uh, seniors that will be graduating within the next year. So, um, Dr. Hong, if you want to, um, yeah, just slide. Yeah. yeah, thank you. <laughs> and so um, when so this course has gone through many iterations, and honestly, we're not done yet. And that I think that is a good sign because we are getting more feedback from students and trying to improve things. But uh, we're projecting to you know close out the project by the end of the year. And so when we were doing the course design, it was important um, because there was no textbook and because we're relying on information that's available online and information that Dr. Hong has put together, such as lecture notes and videos, it was important to conceptualize this the right way. And so uh, there were three elements that we were trying to um, basically combine in a, in a module or in a topic. And those were uh, the lecture notes and videos, which is the fundamentals, um, the skill knowledge, which is uh, online learning, and then uh, the skill building, which is the online labs. And so this, uh, this gets a little uh, tricky because we're going from the fundamentals, which are like the basic concepts that students should know to apply to any platform, but then we're marrying that with online platforms that already exist out there, such as AWS, Salesforce, Azure, uh, Microsoft Azure. So we're sending students to these outside um, to these third party websites, but we want to make sure that they know to, how to apply the fundamentals to any situation that may arise in their career. And so, uh, with, uh, so it was important for us to think of assessments that tie the two worlds together, right? And so, for example, learning journals, which was a, uh, just a quick summary of what students are. Um, what students were experiencing in these outside platforms and um, basically synthesizing their thoughts about these were important to include in the course. Also, the completion of industry certificates, such as the ones we mentioned before, Salesforce, Google, um, those, were, uh, those were important for our students because those are, again, very tangible skills that they can take to um, job interviews in the future. And, and Dr. Hong has had some students actually land jobs because of the training they received in this course. Um, there was also this opportunity to build in individual and group projects that simulate situations or scenarios that students would be facing in the real world. So uh, if you are a, a cloud computing specialist uh, working with a company, and your client comes in with, with a certain problem that you have to solve using cloud computing technology, how do you do that with the tools and the knowledge that you have available? And this is very much what students work through throughout the semester. And then because this is um, actually a course that does have a synchronous element to it, um, students do go to class to meet with Dr. Hong once a week. There is also some elements of pop quizzes and exams uh, just to sort of make sure that students are keeping up with with the content that we're that we're presenting there. Um, I'm ready for the next slide, uh, Dr. Hong. Did you have anything else to add there? No, no, okay. that's okay. good. Okay, so of course, with many iterations and with so much um, going on and trying to balance all of these, there are there are of course some challenges that we faced and that we're still continuing to address. 
So the first challenge was um, there's too much to fit in, right? We would want our students to have a lot more time to go through some of this content. So um, with each iteration, we've been able to reduce um, the concepts that are introduced to allow students to focus more time and energy towards the ones that uh, Dr. Hong believes would make the most impact in their, uh, in their careers. Content organization, again, with uh, having students kind of jump around many platforms, that was a challenge. And so what um, we did here, you'll see this picture, and it's very small because I wanted to capture the whole setup that exists in my college. But uh, what we did is we organized the course in five topics, and then each topic has this substructure where students uh, are allowed to make a plan for the topic, which lasts usually two or three weeks. They get introduced to cloud computing skills, which are um, those fundamentals that we were talking about. And they're mostly videos that Dr. Hong has produced himself. And then we move into industry competencies where students have a chance to explore third party platforms that um, give them the, the industry knowledge and skills um, that makes them relevant in the workplace. So this is where they have a chance to go and complete modules outside iCollege, but then they return to complete an assessment in this uh, subsection. And then the last um, submodule there, as you see, is celebrate your progress, which is um, an opportunity to one, give students a chance to really actually feel good about what they've been doing because it is a lot, but also to summarize all that they have learned in this topic and, and to restate the learning objectives of this topic and uh, sort of give them a chance as a mental note to see whether they feel confident that they've met these learning objectives. Um, so bridging the gap between the fundamentals and the tools has been something that we talked about quite a bit because um, uh, Dr. Hong is very passionate in making sure that students are not sort of slaves to the tools that exist because the technology does uh, progress so rapidly. And so uh, that is why those self-learning journals and um, carefully designing those assessments was crucial because we wanted to make sure that students know the why behind the motions they're making. And then uh, the active learning pedagogy, sort of like the uh, flipped classroom model, right? Because they, they do meet once a week. And so I think many students expect the professor to be lecturing in class, and that is not what happens in this course because all the learning materials are available to students online to uh, progress through at their own pace. Um, they are expected to have um, to have gone through the material and to have a basic understanding of the concepts before they join class for the week. So then they can work through problems, do group project work. So it's a very, um, learners do have to take a very active role in it. And we have, I feel that we have done a good job at explaining what the expectations are and why this is beneficial, but I think it always could use some tweaking in the future. Uh, in terms of setting the tone for the class. And then the last one, and this is where I feel that we are still doing the most progress in, is um, the idea of the Realize It platform versus iCollege. So when we first um, um, started working together on this, on this uh, grant, the most of the contents that uh, Dr. Hong had developed, which are YouTube videos and uh, lecture notes and they really, again, walk students through the fundamentals. These were housed in a platform called Realize It, which is an adaptive learning platform. And while that did a good job of, um, of guiding students through the learning experience, it was actually, um, it, it had a cost associated to it. And for the, for the first few years, and I may be wrong here, but I believe that the grant would cover that uh, negotiate that lowered negotiated fee, but then in the future students would have to pay that. And so, the biggest change that we made um, as a first step was to move the content from the Realize It platform into iCollege. Um, so, Dr. Wong, if you progress to the next slide, I can uh, show. 
Thank you. So, um, so you'll see on the left there, that is what a page of content looks like for students right now. There is a, there is a, a note taking sheet that guides them through the each video and they can, uh, you know, engage with the concepts that are being presented. And again, this is to no cost to our students because um, everything is in iCollege and we already are licensed through there, but we are not done with uh, rethinking how we're presenting this information yet. The next step for us will be to basically take these videos and make them into um, like a coherent um, learning experience for our students. And to the right, you, you're, what you're seeing there is basically a demo of what that would look like um, or a screenshot of a demo. So uh, we are thinking that we will most likely be using PlayPosit to create an interactive learning experience for our students. So all the videos will be chaptered in, in one self-contained module, and then there will be interactions built in, and even some potential for um, students to skip ahead based on performance or keep getting more videos that are um, supplemental content for students that may be struggling with certain concepts. So this is really the, the biggest, um, our biggest charge right now. And um, I think that uh, so far the student feedback has been positive. But I, um, but I'm very excited to see what the, what the feedback will be once we are done with uh, this transformation in December. Yeah, thank you. I think, it, uh, thank you for being out to build up this wonderful iCollege website. Uh, you should have said before and after, <laughs> before we should do the work. My, my iCollege I website looks awful. Well, to me, it looks fine, but it's a very plain, nothing, this is not attractive, just simply presenting information. And she has done a wonderful job, organize, uh, structure the whole content to serve the learning outcome and learning objectives. Um, big, big thank you for doing all this work. Yeah, it's, I, I think it's been really fun and um, I just, uh, I wish we had, you know, years and years to work on this project because it is, it is fun to keep tweaking things. So. All right. That's never ending. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you both. Um, it is never ending. And I think that's a good thing that we have these living working projects um, that we can always update because like you mentioned, it is important to, to keep our content up to date. So we have one more team. We have a, a team from social work that's going to, to talk to us today. So if you all don't mind um, telling us, uh, um, introduce a brief introduction to yourself and to your project, you'll be our, our last group. Good afternoon, everyone. I see that my colleague, uh, Jan oh. Ligon, is here. Can Jan, you, you want to get now? started? Can you hear me now? Yes. Would you like to start us, the other Jan? <laughs> and yes, by starting our introductions, yes, you are hearing correctly that there are two Jans. Um, my name is Jan Ivory. I'm an associate professor in the School of Social Work and assistant dean for academic programs in Andrew Young School of Policy Studies. Okay. Um, I just noticed this picture I put up here a while back. <laughs> the varsity. Okay. Um, we this is this course has been around a long time in the School of Social Work. It's an intro to social work class, sort of a survey course that gives the students a very broad sort of shotgun of the uh, of what social work is in the profession and where social workers are employed and all that. Uh, it was taught live for a long, long, long time, and the decision was made about maybe three years ago to go online with the course. So we did it with, um, there was a, a intro textbook that had 14 learning units. And of course there's 14 courses in the semester. The book had been around a long time. So we went with that textbook as a way to base the, the online class. And it was okay, except that uh, the textbook was over $100 if you bought a new 
in paper. Um, you could get a you know a little less if you did like rent it from uh, you know one of the resources or whatever for the semester, but it was kind of a pricey tech. So Scott Jakes from Criminal Justice in uh, at Georgia State, who's really taken the lead with a lot of folks on encouraging us to consider uh, an, an Affordable Learning Georgia ALG grant, um, talked with me and said, you know, why don't you put a proposal through for this? And so we did, and um, it was accepted. And I was, we were, I, I worked with uh, uh, Lionel Scott from our department also helped me uh, initially with this. And at the kind of about the same time, a grant came along that we could apply for to uh, also participate in a Jan, I've lost my, my, the name of the, of the thing now, the, what's the name of the course, the, um, the Steve Harrow work with us on, what's, what's the name of those, the master class. The master course. Master class, yeah, master course. And so what that initiative at Georgia State was trying to do was trying to, not only, obviously the ELG is to eliminate course costs or get them way down, but the master class was also one more step, and that was to could help us design a course that basically anybody could take in the whole USG system. So like perimeter or anybody could adopt this course, and it's sort of a turnkey kind of a thing. And it followed a very specific format. And with that resource, if you will, we were able to get also a course designer to work with us and a technical support person. So we really were well resourced for this. So uh, sort of the next thing that happened was Dr. Ivory and I um, started working on pulling together, you know, free content, not only because it was free, but we were also looking for relevant content. Um, you know, one of the things we really worked on was trying to infuse more content related to social justice uh, because the previous class kind of talked about it, but we were able to pull in materials that really um, it helped the student better connect to what we're talking about when we when we say social justice and how it relates to social work. So, bottom line of what happened was we ended up with a uh, a fully online course with no cost to students that now is also a master class. And I think we're about I want to say we're into our third semester now with this fully redesigned course uh, from a you know, sort of a data standpoint, the biggest change has been is that our course enrollments have roughly tripled since we went from live to now where we where we are at this point. We're running at about 150 students a semester now, and um, the student course evaluations have been have been very very good for this class. Um, sometimes I, I I'm still a little bit surprised about that because I I guess I'm still a little bit uh, biased around you know, or at least questioning sometimes is online as good or, well, I think the course evaluations and the student feedback indicates that for this course, it seems to work very well. Um, so Jan, I think that's the kind of the nuts and bolts, but would you like to maybe say anything specifically around some of the, either the content stuff or, mm -hmm. yeah. Sure, sure, my pleasure. Um, our process um, was a little bit different, I think, from maybe some of the other teams that were here because Jan had already applied for the um, LLG grant and he and um, our other colleague were working for uh, looking at no cost or free materials. So I came on when we were ready for the course development stage. And when I was approached to work on a project, I said, well, this is exciting because one of my critiques of textbooks, particularly in a field like social work, because we focus on social justice issues, um, the political landscape um, and all those type of things related to homelessness, mental health, all what I often refer to as the common social problems in which we want to train our students to work. When we rely on textbooks, the minute the textbook is published, it's out of date. So I was attracted to working um, with this team on how do we build the content in a way that it makes sense. And I know um, throughout the process, I know I drove Jan absolutely nuts with my constant grid that we updated because one of the opportunities of using free or low cost materials is that you can be flexible and use very timely materials. But a challenge is how to make sure those materials align with the course objectives, goals, learning outcomes, and in social work, our competencies. 
So it was a lot of back and forth, similar to what the other groups um, have presented, that it's not kind of a one and done. It was a reiterative process, and we would have to start start to put boundaries on the material we found because there was just so much from news sources, podcasts, webinars that would be useful for our students. So I would have to say when we were asked to speak about, you know, some of the challenges and opportunities, I think that's one of them of how do you organize the information so that it stays aligned with we kind of our course alignment chart um, to make sure that you are targeting what you are supposed to do to make sure that it's not only engaging and fun, but we're actually getting to the core learning objectives of what we want our students um, to do. Um, I also wanted to acknowledge our course designer, Steve Hero, um, and Rosella, who was very helpful, and a couple other folks, but those who really worked with us, um, we met weekly initially, and then we moved to a bi-weekly process, kind of once we had the shell um, built out. So I know Jan um, had the knowledge of the resources that he, the type of resources he wanted to use because he has taught this course multiple times. And um, I think we balanced each other out of kind of, well, how does this fit? Because that is, I think is one of the other challenges is how do you communicate how these all fit as we do the scaffolding for our students? Um, because for our class, the Social Work 2000 class, it is the one of the very first classes our undergraduate majors take, um, but it's also kind of for many students the first time they even hear of social work and how we attract students to our major. So we also had kind of the lens of how can we use this as a marketing tool without having exorbitant textbooks for students so we can have as many students take this course um, as possible. Um, this course is kind of a core course in our new online undergraduate social work program. So we have been able to um, use this course, not only um, in the curriculum, but also as a way as kind of a first impression of social work. So the way that we've looked at no cost is not only to reduce um, the expense associated uh, with attending school for our students, but also how can we make it attractive to as many students as possible for whom maybe social work is not their major, but I don't have to buy a $150, $100 textbook. So maybe I'll check this course out to see what it holds and it may be an interest for me. Jam. Uh, yeah, and you know, back to this uh, business of enrollment, which uh, ties in with what you, what you just said, Jan, about also how we've had a number of people end up changing their major because of this and it, mm -hmm. mostly because we're not in the core and so they, they never heard of social work. They've heard of, you know, psychology and sociology and political science. And oftentimes students tend to pick a major that's in stuff they've had during those first two years. Uh, so that's, that's, that's been encouraging. We added a summer section, which we had not done in years because we never had enough numbers. We did it one time and we didn't get that many students, but we, we ran a summer section this summer and got 60 students. So, um, you know, just a, FYI, for those of you who have intro type courses out there in your departments, I think that uh, these are really good vehicles uh, to um, attract uh, students uh, you know, throughout the year, as it's turned out for us. We're going to offer it again this summer as well. I think that concludes my part, Jan. <laughs> uh, yep, yeah, me too. <laughs> Brief and fast, right? <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you all so much. And that's so exciting about the increase in enrollment and having to add um, or having the opportunity to add um, another course through the summer. This is very exciting. So um, at this point, we've had all three groups uh, talk a little bit about their projects, and I would like to open the floor for questions. Um, if you want to speak up, I, that's perfectly fine, or you could enter your questions in the chat if you would like. But these are questions for any of the three teams. Hi, everyone. I'll kick it off real quick. Um, I am curious what the participants think about how do we get our colleagues to adopt this sooner than later um it can be you know one of those things once you do it you really enjoyed it and you're happy you did but getting people over that initial hurdle can be you know very challenging especially with all that's already going on right now with the pandemic 
Uh, so yeah, I'd be interested to hear people's ideas on that. Maybe some reflection on how we could have got you into it earlier as well. Well, I, I would say for me, Scott, I honestly, I just was not a, aware of the ALG uh, opportunity until you told me about it like, like two, three years ago. So I don't, I, I, that's the first thing I guess I'd have to, uh, although you've done a good job of communicating to our college for sure, but um, I, honestly, I just wasn't aware of it. Um, but I think when these, even within our college, when you've got uh courses where there are multiple sections, um, you know, with, with, with pretty high enrollment numbers, it would look to me like, we, yeah, I think that we should probably have at least uh, X number of sections of, of this available to students. Uh, you know, it's just something that I think we should do. Yeah, I, I kind of agree. Uh, the main thing is I'm not even aware of this uh, grant until somehow uh, I, I run into in one of the email communications. So I think be awareness is a, it's a very important to get people involved to apply for the grant. It's a, it's a very giving the budget a cut. I think I mean, this grant for us is very helpful to fill up whatever we need to do. Do y'all have any suggestions on how we can better get the word out about these grants? Uh, presentation, <laughs> more seminars, <laughs> don't know. I have to jump in, Jan Ivory. Remember, we we submitted this <laughs> to that uh, online education conference. You remember that? And it got rejected. So, <laughs> you know, so sometimes I'm like sort of a little bit like, what well, we tried. <laughs> I think the other way of getting the word out is having opportunities like this for people to talk about their experiences. Because I meant when I was brought onto the team, I was like, wait, you want me to do what? What does it look like? And I think if you can be clear and intentional about the support that's available to build it and to show how it can be done. So it may not be as overwhelming for people who may have an interest, but because everyone has so much on their plate, um, they may say, oh, it's too much work. I don't want to do it. But I think also communicating real life experiences like this, as well as um, being clear about that it can be manageable and that there is support. Yeah, these are teams working together. So it's not like you have to go alone. We've got librarians who are helping. We've got uh, learning. Uh, design specialists, uh, lots of folks from CETLO who are helping. Um, so there's a lot of support with, with these grants along with the funding. Um, and there is, there is a couple of questions in the chat. So let me take a look in terms of um, getting this done. Here's one. It says, how did you handle the accessibility issue with the open resources? So I think that can be overwhelming for something for some folks too, if you have to make sure that, um, in, in terms of accessibility, maybe you can um, uh, elaborate on what you mean by that, because do you mean um, accessibility? Like if they're, do you mean platform? Do you mean they're also accessible for disabilities or? It could be both because uh, for example, uh, in our department, we had like a totally blind student this semester. And then, you know, some textbook that some of them, the, the reader is not working. So I don't know how we can just check all of those when we kind of try to adapt any kind of textbook or, and also, yeah, I'm teaching math and or math, we need a platform. So we have to just make sure if the reader is working on those. So I don't know if there's any good way we can just check before we kind of try something. Well, our, our course our designer, course Steve, uh, Steve Hero, Steve I'm hearing an echo. Are you all hearing the echo? Yes. Okay, let me, let me, let me still, is it still doing it? A little bit. A little bit. Um, but for example, uh, Steve was able to do things like we had subtitles for all of the audio files uh, that we put up. Um, 
there were lots of little things like that that he was able to do. And I wonder maybe if that's not what we really need the help with for as, as faculty is to say you will have a tech technical person help you with that because I, I don't think this is something necessarily that we can all individually learn how to do. I think it's something that folks that know how to do this can go in and handle that accessibility piece. That, that's what happened for us. And that's, um, that's part fun. of what I was working on with the uh, the chemistry uh, textbook as well as making sure that it would be accessible to screen readers. We do have somebody on staff at CETLO um, whose job is specifically focused on like accessible resources. And so if you have questions about particular platforms or things like that, I would encourage you to reach out to uh, to CETLO and, and we may be able to get you some perspective on that or some best practices. Um, Okay, sounds great. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to say something about the getting the word out issue, kind of going backwards a little bit. Um, I've been participating in like outreach events with OER since like 2014 or so. And um, the ones that I've had the most success with have involved other faculty. I'm a librarian, um, but it have involved faculty that use OER. So I think this kind of thing is great. So I think those kind of presentations, as well as, um, um, you know, word of mouth among the, the teaching faculty are really helpful in, in influencing other faculty who might feel overwhelmed or not know what kind of resources are available with CETLO and librarians and ALG and stuff like that. Yeah, I think that's important um, about talking about all the resources that are available. And I guess also thinking about that, um, I could ask a question about challenges. So, you know, what, and when you were creating and this question is for any team who wants to pick it up. If when you were creating your project, um, what was your biggest challenge, and and um, how did you how did you deal with it? Um, could I jump in? Sure, jump in. Yeah, uh, I think for me, uh, the biggest um, when I started working with uh, Rubina at. Um, the, the number one concern I have is because this of course is very technical, right? The topics, the way I think, students should learn, all this is uh, the way I want it, right? Um, so at the very beginning, we have a uh, try to understand each other uh, to say, well, what my, what are my thoughts are? And Rubina come from, she came from the course design and learning objectives, learning outcomes, how you assess the learning outcomes. So it's like a two different plate right? <laughs> trying to put together and eventually work out as what it showed up to, um, today. It's, it's, it's the result of many, many hours of discussion through trying just different ideas. I think for for others wanted to go this road, need to plan for time okay, to to really uh, work together to know as a build as a partnership. That's required time. Be patient too. Both sides. I'm sure Rebena can can testify. Sometimes I would get so <laughs> not easy to work with. Yeah, that's my my comment. Yeah, I also agree. I completely agree with this because we need a lot of time. We discussed a lot of problems, a lot of contents with uh, all our collaborators and designers and librarians. And still, we are, we, it is like never ending work. Still, we are trying to work on the stabilization, fixing the bugs and um, find out the, all the feedbacks that we are getting from colleagues. We are collecting that. So we need time, definitely, and that perimeter, that's a big issue because we have a huge teaching load and um, getting time out of those teaching loads is a very big challenge for us.
Um, one of the things you all were talking about, um, just now, there's a couple of things you were talking about, um, assessments and feedback, um, in terms of, of what you've heard from students, you all mentioned some, some student about some student feedback in your presentations, but, um, what are some things that you're hearing from the students? Are they enjoying the content? Um, and have they given you any kind of information that would help you improve the course? Uh, like so far at the midpoint, we do not have any withdrawal from any of the courses that are using ebook. There are three sections that are using ebook, and we, none of them have any um, students withdrawn. So that means students are definitely enjoying the content, and they are more eager to. In, they are more interested to learn, rather than learning from the restricted uh, traditional format. So we are making everything free, open, and I think that's the uh, thing students enjoy most. Well, I, I I would say that for our course, uh, consistently some of the more some of the positive feedback has been around the fact that, and again, it's an intro class, it, it's a little, little different, but it's it's highly organized, and every unit is run the same way. Uh, which, which we can do in this particular class. So the students have many times commented that they like the fact that they know where they stand, they know what's going on, they know what's supposed to happen next. Because um, as we know, not all students do well with online. And so I, for us, that is, that's something I think that has definitely uh, come through with uh, the feedback. As far as improvement, um, I, I, I can't think of anything specifically um, that anything big, you know, uh, I, as was mentioned, as, as Jan Ivory mentioned, we're, we we keep looking at this thing to <clears throat> to uh, change up the content. I do have an assignment that's out with them right now that um, I've gotten. If I've gotten three or four emails asking for clarification, then I need to go through the next time and fix that. So it's that that kind of feedback where they're not sure about a particular part of the assignment. So that's also feedback to improve the class that I'm. I will be working on that, but uh, overall, the again, the structure uh, and, and organization is something that they they find to be very helpful. Was there anything about the projects, um, like like was there something that happened that was unexpected that you had to deal with? I. Well, let, let me jump in. I expect that students are going to spend more time giving all those available um, materials, easy access. Um, but the, I don't know, because uh, I always look back, uh, this is COVID, and this is a COVID situation, whatever we see, the student behavior may not be representative. Um, I haven't noticed kind of like a drop of a student decrease, I should say, the motivation from students to actively go and, and, and learn. I don't know, it's because of my um, very small sample sample of uh, students or this is a, a general problem. And another thing we have different, I mean, we do like a, Rubina helped me create this surveys. We have a survey at the beginning of the semester in the middle term in the final exam, of, I'm sorry, final semesters. Now, one of the difficulties we cannot compare is not like we have a multiple sessions, like a, um, many of our colleagues presented, right? You have a multiple sessions, you can kind of collect the data to show, to measure uh, the effectiveness of the course design, course contents. Um, this course has only one, only one section. It's, a, it's only for one concentration. So it's a very, it's a it's a challenge how to compare to a research on uh, to measure the outcome. 
that given everything's going on, COVID, um, no, no idea what that impact on whatever we measured in this situation. So I don't know, I'd I'm, I'm love to hear from other um, panelists what their suggestions. Uh, for me, I think after pandemic, I see students' attention span has really, really been reduced. Like we have to speak within a couple of seconds, they have to get things done. Otherwise, it is very hard for them to get their attention into the course materials. So we were thinking initially, like we, I have talked to my team members, like if we can have one mobile app type thing because they want to have it everywhere, like whenever they want to study, like if they are in the airport or they are somewhere working like that. So that was one of the plans that we initially discussed, like how to how to um, uh, take care of those students who, who have very, very small attention span, who really needs to know what is exactly they need to succeed in the course. So, We'll see how that goes, but right now, this is, uh, we are all facing the same thing. I think with the students, it is everywhere. Same. Already, I think, um. We're getting to be, um, pretty close to to an hour in, which was our allotted time is. But is there anything else um, that we might have missed that you think is is important that you might want to share? Does anybody from my group want to say something, Doctor Atiyah, Doctor Bosman? Uh, no, you, you you covered every every corner and edges. Yeah. I was very yeah. fast. Yeah, so yeah thank, you. Corner, thank you for covering everything. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. This is Doctor Ahmed Bosman. And of course, you know, the team as a team leading up the view, you have covered everything. And of course, you know, we wanted to know more and elaborate about the uh, new access of the students they want to have. Like you spoke yeah. correctly on that, you know, I think that is one of the things, you know, the students will get the attention for that. Yes, yeah. Well, great. Thank you Thank so you. much, everyone. I'm going to share, um, this final screen with some um, information from about the Affordable Learning Georgia grant. Um, I think probably the November 1st deadline is a, a little soon for anyone who's thinking about doing this <laughs> since it's Monday. Um, but then the round 21 deadline is February 14th and we haven't um, announced round 22 yet. So um, if anyone is interested, then uh, these deadlines are, are coming up. So um, please reach out and let us know if, if you need any help with um, submitting your application. All right, well, thank you so much, everyone. I really enjoyed your presentations. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, to thank welcome you. Thank this you. panel. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Have a good weekend, everyone. Thank you. you too. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.